Welcome to Space Station guys once again my name is Sabi and in this short video I will talk a little bit about my equipment what I'm using for International Space Station and satellite photography so I will show you what I'm using here we go Right, so this is the type of scope I'm using. This is a 10 inch Dobsonian telescope and I am absolutely satisfied with this. It's just the right size to be honest. It's not too small but big enough to actually capture something really meaningful and to have enough details. Um, so it's a 250 millimeter mirror in there and the focal length is a thousand two hundred millimeter and I already changed the focuser because it was a single speed focuser and for a lot of things I'm doing I do need the extra uh, double speed focuser what the double speed focuser can give you in terms of fine um, focusing that's definitely essential but it's a simple telescope I sometimes use an equatorial platform uh, but for International Space Station photography I don't really do that unless I really uh, wanna capture something super super good and I wanna make sure the alignment between my tail rod which I'm usually putting here into this plate uh, it's aligned perfectly as perfectly as possible so right now I will show you everything that I'm using usually so let me start with it came with the telescope this is a 1050 as far as I'm concerned a 1050 finder scope which I'm usually putting right here uh, I'm not using this for International Space Station photography so this is one way of finding things in the sky uh, I'm not using this for International Space Station photography because it has a, a mirror image and it drives me nuts and I never took my time to actually buy uh, uh, I think the, the corrected view but, in, but otherwise as well when I'm tracking the International Space Station um, you need to hold your eye against it which means you are in an awkward position. So to avoid that, I'm rather using a tail rod, which is a, a, a superb little tool. Um, basically, as I'm, as I'm gonna mount to the scope like this, I'm looking through from this direction. And the design is that there is uh, three concentric circles in there projected onto this glass plate so in here I can see the three circles and then the smallest I try to keep in the middle the International Space Station usually I'm using these extensions that came with the telescope so this one this is for two inch I know from experience that if I put this on usually I like this ring because this uh, once it brings down the diameter from two inch to one and a quarter and the other good thing is that you can see this brass plate in there I can just uh, uh, put an eyepiece or a camera in there and holds it much firmer than two screws so I I like to use this but I know in prime focus if I insert the camera here I cannot focus enough inside so that direction to get a pin sharp uh, photo um, or a view of a star it's more like a donut but I'm all right with that so instead of just taking this bit out and using the top bit and then putting it back again uh, to have a focal point I don't really care 
um, because then I usually put um, a focal extender and then it all works out fine. Um, sometimes I do need this one, that's another way, but again I prefer this bit because of the two screws are just less handy. I always have a plus all 20 millimeter eyepiece with me just in case if I can't find things in the sky with the camera I just put this quickly in and I can just see and I can just see quickly things I can find the star align uh, both or one of the aiming devices and then I can just carry on with the standard procedure of focusing and so on and so forth I use two cameras this is uh, an ASI 224MC color camera from ZWO and that's a brilliant little camera very good sensitivity is, um, this is how you actually connect the cable you insert it here I always I always pay attention that if this is the cable that's co that comes out I always place it the way this always needs to point down with or parallel with this screw because it means then that everything that I can see at the way it's, they are actually in the sky according to my experience also what works for me absolutely well is a Teleview two and a half times power mate I just love this bit it's an expensive kit but once but once you have one it's gonna go on forever because there's nothing better at the moment at the affordable price range and then the, just the camera goes here and with this setup I usually have 3000 millimeter of focal length remember that the, uh, the basic focal length is 1200 millimeter and times two and a half that's precisely 3000 millimeter so three meters of focal length I'm using usually using for imaging I have at the moment temporarily a 174 mm camera with me that's a mono camera and I'm doing certain um, experiments with that it works out really well but this is my main ISS imaging telescope you can look inside there you go that's it's a brilliant piece of equipment I also always use a Batinov mask that comes with two three little screws that I can just put in here and it stays on top this is essential this is essential for focusing for for absolutely sharp focusing this is a must-have I do not recommend not using one because it's super super handy filters at last I'm using sometimes a red filter from ZWO I bought it as a filter set I don't think they are selling it alone as a single item and and two more things that works out for me is basically it's an IR pass filter these two the IR pass and the red filter is usually used to reduce uh, the bad atmospheric conditions and lately I started taking photos of Venus about the clouds and that's a Venus uh, filter it's a Venus Bada Venus filter and that only works with a mono camera so I need to remember that this can only be used by the 174mm camera so one more thing I'm usually using for collimation a laser collimator I know I'm aware that this is not the best this is not the best uh, equipment one can have because the accuracy is not 100% so basically these are the equipment I'm using it's not a huge investment I would say I think it's a relatively affordable equipment if you think about it that you just buy a telescope I think the stock price at the moment is around uh, 600 pounds and then the rest is probably another let me just think camera yeah it's another five six seven eight hundred pounds but for this price you're gonna get an easily transportable and big enough but not too big 
size telescope, a brilliant camera which you can do planetary imaging, you can do moon imaging, bit of solar imaging, uh, international space station, satellites, all these things, basically whatever the challenge guides you. And uh, and yeah, it's it's easy to store, it's collapsible. So probably you saw me setting up. So you saw me setting up, so you can see that this bit completely collapses. So it's much easier basically to just carry it around. And uh, yes, the only reason why I did not improve too much is because I really want to show to people how easy it is to actually uh, work uh, with a manually track telescope because it has a whole lot of advantages and I just love it because it's, it's simple, it's easy. I would say if I'm in a rush, I can set it up in half an hour probably or, or around that time plus minus five minutes I would say so straightforward and it works perfectly for me so if you have any questions just drop it at the um, comment section uh, please follow me if you think that my channel is worth following and uh, again ask me any questions if you want you can uh, support me on patreon because I am trying to share these kind of informations I already have the space station guys which is just here spacestationguys.com come and visit me and say hi and ask me a question and i try to help you out and again support is more than welcome it helps me to have more time to do what i love and give back more to you guys so thank you take care bye bye